So uh, I'm afraid my English won't be as good as the one of the, the previous speaker. Um, first, I would like to thank the organizer of this great session uh, for allowing me to present here the result of the feed work, my feed work in southern France. And uh, I would like to thank them for something else. Also, I will, will thank you twice. Uh, this, the, other, the other thank you will come at the end of the, of the paper. So my aim is to communicate the result of my feedback in two terms that allows as much as possible for comparison for discussion by people from outside my uh, own uh, academic background. It's not that easy to, to try. Uh, it's not that easy. I choose in order to, to make that, to try to get rid as much as possible of the most context-specific academic vocabulary, uh, the, the term we use to, to use between uh, colleagues. And um, I do that in order to be understood by as many persons as possible, and uh, as many persons as my English allows to, to, to be understood. <laughs> I will also try to, to think about the agglomeration as a dynamic feature. This is why you see uh, pictures moving, because I, I try to figure out that uh, not like a succession of phases, but as a dynamic, uh, as an evolution, as a process, as something that changes through time. Um, as you may have noticed, uh, the one among you that has a big uh, abstract book uh, may have noticed, I proposed in the paper abstract to follow a three steps uh, evolution for, the, for my analysis. Morphogenesis, morphodynamics, and site formation processes. I will only keep one, uh, two, excuse me, of these three categories for uh, a reason uh, I will explain later. So morphogenesis it won't be uh, a term I will use. During the Iron Age, the area spreading from the Valencian country to the south, uh, from, from the Valencian country in Spain to the south, to uh, the Languedoc, uh, south of Languedoc to the north, uh, shared a lot of common aspects from an archaeological uh, point of view. And uh, normally, this is not the uh, right thing I choose, but it, it, this is it. I apologize for that. Um, so they shared a common way of making pottery, a common, uh, common architectural practices, and also a common written language, a common writing. Um, I will focus here, basically, in this area, the northern one, uh, because it's a very diversified area, and uh, I will keep um, my, myself with a, with a tiny one here in southern France. The bigger sites, those considered to play a major role in the landscape, were mainly enclosed agglomeration, with some exception. Enclosed agglomeration of an extension of Two to exceptionally ten hectares. So I told, uh, told you it was uh, there was a bigger site. They are not that big either because we are about site of three hundred and more hectares before. So so mine are, are, are dwarfs uh, compared to this to this one. Um, these sites were also characterized by a dense in our occupation, basically an occupation of domestic buildings built with stone and mud bricks. The settlements were mainly located at the top of, of hills. So, uh, to sum up, settlements that we can uh, settle, hilltop settlements, relatively small, densely occupied, and often fortified. This is a typical agglomeration of this region, a typical Iron Age agglomeration of this region. These conditions allow for regular post depositional processes and condition of excavations. From one side to another are similar enough. The falling of the roof of the possible floors and of the higher part of the wall generates an accumulation of material that would fill a sedimentary basin delineated by the walls of different rooms. So the overall archaeological picture uh, associated with such sites is in a certain way quite stereotyped. These settlements are mainly interpreted as a result of a specific historical context the Greek colonization from 600 BC uh, on world. The local communities would have developed new organizational structure in order to produce more surpluses to trade with the Greeks. The initial phase of these sites, here, 
uh, in Ansarin, for example, had generally attracted few attention. This is not fortuitous. To sum up, this first moment of occupation is generally, uh, generally not considered very interesting by archaeologists, except for its establishing a chronological frame. First occupation is generally cons considered as provisional, with some cabins and some huts. You can see the cabin, for example. Um, to shelter the, uh, the builders of the true agglomeration with its stone fortification and its stone and mud brick houses. This is the general idea. The sites would be the result of a plan, a project. And this project is to create a settlement fit for surplus production. So this video doesn't work. It should. Works now. So uh, this is a general idea. This site will be the result of a plan, a project, and this project is to create a settlement fit for surplus production, a short dynamic moment, the formation leading to a long, somehow static period once uh, the agglomeration have taken is definitive shape. I would like to challenge these ideas by moving inland and down to millennium in time to the site of Malview. We are on the mountains, north from the littoral area, but not that far from it. Still in the Mediterranean landscape, the site itself is located on a limestone hill, which top is almost, yeah, a, uh, which top is almost uh, 500 meters above sea level and 120, uh, 20, uh, 120 meters high. It dominates a small river and is highly visible from other points in the valley and from the opposite side of the valley also. Slopes are around 30-40% steep, so very steep, and forest cover is nowadays almost omnipresent. These conditions, along with strong karstic activity, generate a very specific, complicated and complex taphonomy, and an original one. We are the first team to develop long-term strategies, uh, excavation strategies in this context, with a systematic excavation of 2,000 square meters, one-tenth of the world site. Most of the difficulty comes in the one hand uh, from the fact that erosion has taken away a lot of material, while colluviation has brought elements coming from up here. Yet, as we will see, this modification alters the site, otherwise well, uh, well preserved, thus ensuring some kind of paradoxical cohabitation between drastic destruction on the one hand and good preservation on the other hand. A very different taphonomy than the one observed in the lowlands I explained to you before. Occupation of the site began around the very end of the second millennium BC and no later in any case than the 10th century BC. Uh, it seems that the site, uh, during the first phase, it seems that the site was open and didn't have any fortification. The rampart, uh, you can see the red crate uh, here, that's uh, the, 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 the rampart materialization of the rampart. The rampart was, uh, is built uh, only towards 800 BC. We have very few structures belonging to this initial period, only one stone wall and a few layers, but these layers were observed and excavated all across the site, uh, in the area as well as in the lower parts of uh, the site. Since the beginning, then, the two hectares of the site were inhabited and the natural slopes were leveled through the, uh, through the construction of terraces but no fortification once more existed until around 800 BC. When a rampart two meters wide and probably as tall as five meters was built, uh, except to the north where um, a cliff, uh, a cliff of uh, the natural defense. Most of the remains we know of the inner occupation belong to the period between the erection of the rampart and the end of the occupation by the end of the 6th century BC. Big houses, one of 80 million square meters here, more than 80 square meters here, big houses uh, appear apparently as early as the 8th century BC. They are probably a sign of increasing social differentiation and that appear also through specific practices. 
as hunting of white game, like deer, and uh, more exceptionally, bear. This is a, a bear tooth yeah, found in the, in the big house itself. Also, fragmentary architecture uh, could be studied uh, because of the preservation of remains in situ. Uh, this is one good example of, uh, of the difficulties of the site. You can see here a lot of stones. Beneath the stones, even if it is difficult to believe, there was a wall one meter tall uh, concerned uh, um, against um, the bedrock. And this is how it works. The upper part of the infill of rock came from uh, above by corrugation. The uh, part below is, in fact, the falling of the walls. Uh, there is a part of the, of the accumulation of blow coming from the falling that have been taken out as the erosion, and another part uh, of the stone is bringing, is brought by uh, corrugation. So it's quite difficult to, to, to figure out, to, um, to find uh, a way to, to study this kind of, of stuff. Uh, we have also uh, in other place, remains found in secondary position, like wall fallen in one block, or fragments of wall fallen in well, uh, one block here. And uh, we uh, registered these blocks through uh, using 3D scan, and that allowed for uh, study the construction and the way it fell uh, in order to, to, to verify our hypothesis regarding the nature of the construction. Uh, so the blocks were still in connection, they allowed for construction for restituting a wall more than one meter high, but the blocks were stick together by clay, and uh, when the block fell, they remained in connection, and clay uh, was uh, taken uh, towards uh, the lower part of the sedimentary basin. Fortification. Dense in our, uh, dense in our occupation, with houses made of stone and clay, I think it is clear that my view belongs to the same family of sites that the one known for the most, uh, for the most, uh, the more recent period of the Iron Age. Mediterranean trade, however, cannot explain what happened in my view. Mediterranean imports are known in the settlement but belong to the, its last period, the 6th century BC. So my view emerged at the end of the late Bronze Age and cost became an, uh, uh, an agglomeration as we thought only existed in the later Iron Age uh, from the 8th century BC onwards. I do not know what the processes, what were the processes that led to the origin of this site. I do not know that. And I must confess I only have some guesses, not facts, uh, about that. But what I know is that it is only after three to five generations that the fortification was built. A period of time which is not linked with the overall difficulty of the construction, around 150 days for one skilled worker. So if we, you have 30 skilled workers, it's 50 days. So it's not that difficult to build. In my opinion, then the fortification, well, if the fortification was built so late, it's because for more than a century, it was considered that no fortification was needed. My view was not founded as a hill fort to be. It was an open settlement on the slopes of a hill and was experienced as such by its inhabitants. It was founded like that. This is why I discarded the notion of morphogenesis, which suggests a linear process of evolution, while indeed this evolution was much more fluid than we used to think. In my opinion, the appearance of the fortification is linked with the social dynamics at work within the community. Many factors may have played a role in this process. Increasing internal competition may have made suitable the development of collaborative works in order to, to increase the cohesion of the group or to salvage it, while increasing external competition would have represented an incentive to find solutions to protect efficiently the community. Landscape appropriation may also be considered the hill could be seen from far, for example, from the Rock de saint bosil three kilometers away, which seems to have been an important feature of the, of the landscape. A statue mania was erected there during the Calcolithic, and two first Iron Age tombs uh, were excavated there also. 
in this context, in this, with this topography, the ramparts, the walls, the terraces were all visible from the outside, and such a monumentalization of the, of the hill gave obvious symbolic advantages to it. <laughs> I hesitated a lot before to, <laughs> to try that. The morpho, in conclusion, excuse me, the morphodynamics of my view are similar to the one observed in many sites much more recent of the Little Rose Hall. My opinion is that demonstra it demonstrates clearly that the genesis of the typical Iron Age agglomeration is not related to trade with Greek or Etruscans. The internal chronology of my view suggests much, much more that trade is a consequence of the emergence of the social groups which materialize, uh, materialize themselves through this peculiar, relatively small, fortified community. The origin of such settlement patterns seem to belong to the late Bronze Age. And it seems likely that the inner mountainous zone, zone were much more dynamic than we used to believe. In my view, at least, I don't think that the initial moment of the occupation, apparently characterized by an architecture that did not, uh, didn't leave many traces, has to be interpreted as some kind of prologue to a hill fort built with stone and clay. But it seems rather to be fully taken into account when constructing the narrative about the site history. Such a narrative is not, is not a model. Uh, similarities can be found with some other sites, uh, later uh, sites, like Nancerin, much closer to the sea, uh, which uh, works as an open settlement for the fire first for, uh, from 550 BC to around 400 BC, once more five generations before the, the stone rampart is built in Nancerin. Yet, more than most, much of the times, my view or Ancerin or other settlements that acquire fortification during their life uh, will be defined as fortified, as if it was a permanent feature. Such an approach, frequent, is indeed teleological. We define the site according to what it was at the end of its history, according to the feature we consider most relevant uh, from an archaeological point of view. Such kind of approach leads us, I think, to a misunderstanding about what uh, these agglomerations were and what was their meaning for those who were inhabited them. Both fear of cooperation and competitive areas. Understanding better the nature of interpersonal relation, of interkin relation, would give many keys for interpreting the genesis and the evolution of this agglomeration. My suggestion now is that the frequent theological approach I was referring to summed up with the appetite of archaeologists for clear cut taxonomies and sometimes also for routine, provide the two straightforward interpretations of what were Iron Age community and in which dynamics they were, they were, they were involved. involved. I think we, we rather have to focus on specific studies, what uh, Manuel called context, uh, contextual studies or from strongly contextualized, uh, contextualized studies, in order to write local, high resolution narratives. Because this is material that can be compared much more so easily than model, in my opinion. And I said initially that I was twice grateful to the organizer. The challenge represented by a session about agglomeration, about this term that is not enjoyed by uh, reviewers from, uh, from uh, all journals, apparently, obliged me to think about the processes I was analyzing in a much more fluid way than I, uh, than I was doing until now. So thank you and thank you for your attention.